Mr. Imaiwe S. Wetty. Mr. Wetty is the chairman of the All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship. He's also uh, our guest here on this program. Mr. Wetty, welcome. Thank you, sir. And I know the both of you are visiting. Correct. Yes, yes. Okay. So, welcome back. Thank you. Thank, mm. you. Thank you. So, how has it been since you've been in country? Well, today makes me 40 days in the country. Okay. More than uh, a month now. More than a month now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the how that can be challenging. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is our country. Uh, we have culture and some other things, uh, some challenges. I think a little bit difficult, okay. but I was very successful in executing a, a solid waste management removal with the Pinsville City Corporation okay. on May 28. And of course, one of the topics we'll, we'll be talking about in a few minutes, the dual citizenship, yeah, is still a challenge here. But in, I mean, the country is nice, people are welcoming and, you know, very approachable. So, so you're highly it. impressive Oh, yeah, with what you've seen around. We are sure, very, very impressive. I haven't seen anything that have, you know, uh, that been uh, of a risk to me, okay. you know, in any way, you know. I, I, I move you, you've been eating your labyrinth food as well. Correct. Right. Eating your yeah. labyrinth food. You can't borrow that now. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's hear from Mr. Wetty. Mr. Wetty? Yes, no, I... Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you very much for hosting us. I've been here since the, uh, the 25th of, uh, of May, and I, I feel very good. Uh, the people are very welcoming. Okay. I think, uh, even though we do, do have challenges, which is expected in the human environment sure. but uh, things things are fine and uh, we know want to tell librarian well, thank you for mm -hmm. the accepting dual citizenship with the lawmakers that want to thank the president we are and the administrator for their support so we are very pleased with what we see what we're hearing and what we're hoping to to get how are our brothers and sisters back uh in in the, in the diaspora how are they well, they, they are doing great. Uh, everybody, like you know, that uh, we always try to rally around our motherland mm -hmm. in terms of COVID, um, Ebola, and other national development. Okay. You know, um, the Illuminati Association, county organization are sponsoring their respective institutions. So we, we're doing well. You know, we are connected to the motherland. We, okay. This is our home. Actually. The, the, right. the, 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 this is home. No matter what you do, this is home. This is the only country that you cannot be deported from. Yeah, surely. That's yeah. it. That's the only country you can be deported from. I like that. Now, so let's hear from, uh, we've got two uh, different group here. Um, uh, you know, the chairman uh, on, on, on the uh, All Liberian uh, Conference on Dual Citizenship uh, will talk about um, the movement, because I know there's a movement that is, you know, pushing this idea. Uh, let's hear from you first, uh, Mr. Kamara. Give us a bit of history, uh, a bit of history, you know, about the National uh, Union of Liberian Association in the Americas. How did you all come together? Well, uh, uh, the history is that uh, Yula was a student group mm. that organized itself in 1972 in the United States, basically uh, to focus on, you know, the academic you know, joining mm -hmm. to just ensure that uh, they, 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 they thrived, you know, in an academic pursuit. Okay. But given the political process at the time that you had a one-party, you know, system, one-party hegemony, you know, the movement quickly, you know, realized that it had to refocus itself on advocacy. Okay. So in 1974, you know, the Union Liberian Association was organized, and of course it, it actually perpetrated and, and, and fought, you know, for, you know, democracy in our country. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the realization today that we all can see is that you can sit here and call your senator, call your representatives. I, I mean, it might not be as we all expected, mm -hmm. but librarians have a say, you know, in who, you know, can represent them. Okay. You know, so that's one of the achievements, you know, of, 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 of the Union of Librarian Student in America. And like the Elmini said, you know, our whole uh, being has been to, to focus on this country, to help the country, you know, to grow in terms of developing mm -hmm. social economic process and things like that. So even outside of this country, we also fought for, uh, advocated, you know, for, for, you know, citizenship and to restore people uh, rights in America so that they could be able to, you know, work, mm -hmm. you know, in America. Honor his, you know, presidency when I was just 
at the time was the local chapter president in Pennsylvania. There were about 10,000 Liberians who were at the verge of being deported, mm. you know, yeah, at the time. And you had to intervene. We had to intervene. We, we, we both loaded people, you know, to my state capital, Harrisburg, and of course, you know, Washington, D.C. And now, in 2019, we have this Elric, Liberian Refugee, you know, Immigration Fairness Act that was, you know, passed, you know, under Donald Trump, you okay. know. Uh, and, and of course, Liberians are benefiting, some benefited, mm -hmm. but they are still a challenge here. Mm -hmm. So, again, you know, whenever a calamity befall on Liberia, like you talk about the, uh, the, the Ebola, mm -hmm. you talk about the Ebola and many of the, you know, other social fabric that affect the country, mm -hmm. you is always involved. Okay. And that's why we are here, you know, to ensure that our citizenship is restored to us, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can be are able to enjoy the oneness again in Liberia. Now, how possible it is, Mr. Kamara, I'm, I'm sure all of you, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, association do have your own political alliances and interests. How possible that, you know, what do you uh, do, what do you tell them, as well as you all in the leadership, to, you know, give them that sense of nationalism, to say, look, Yes, why it is true, we are all divided on some political lines, right. but Liberia is Liberia. I, I think that is a core cool issue that all Liberians in the diaspora understand. Mm -hmm. We are from different you know, spectrums of you know, political leaning. The only thing is that uh, I, as a national president of the union, cannot commit the union to any one single political party Surely. or individual. Okay. For individual members of the union have the right to, you know, to participate mm. and, 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 and become a member of you know, whichever political party. Mm. And one of the striking things that I have, I have said, and many Yula presidents have said over and again, is that whenever the interest and wherever the interest of Liberia is being discussed, Yula will be seated at the table. You know, to ensure, mm -hmm. uh, development-wise, to ensure that our country is run on a smooth path, to ensure that, you know, we support the government in any way possible. So Liberians in the diaspora understand that. And there's already no dichotomy of debates, you know, around. That's good. Okay, now let's hear from Mr. Uh, Eminent uh, Emire S. Wetty. Mr. Wetty, uh, you've been the chairman on, on this uh, All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship. But it's a movement, I understand. Uh, let's hear from you. Give us some historical insight about the, the, the movement. Well, uh, thank you very much for the, for the opportunity. Where well, actually the happiness that um, between 2005 and 2007, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, they, they listened to uh, uh, Hammond and uh, Bendy Warner. Uh, along with uh, Reverend Lloyd, okay. they decided, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, I think the Watterson, they decided to form this activity for the and shit. But they were not, the, the king, they did the best they could, and they left the, the, the journey with us. So in 2012, mm -hmm. librarian from the diaspora met in, in Washington, D.C., uh, under the, the, the leadership of the Union Library Association in America. At the time, it was Ambassador Fulontel, who was the ambassador mm -hmm. at the time. We met in Washington, D.C., and said, look, we all have separate aim of uh, advocating for dual citizenship. So that, that come together. So in 2000, 2012, December, we met in Washington, D.C. and funded the All Latin Conference on Dual Citizenship that comprises of the Union Latin Association in America, Latin in Canada, or Colossua, Latin Advocates for Change, Latin in Australia, Latin in U Europe, EFLA, and Latin in, the, in, in Ghana. Mm. So our focus here is on dual citizenship. That's all we talked about. Okay. So for, for the last, since 2012. So at this point, uh, you know, we are going through many transformations and mm -hmm. we want to thank the president we are and the administration. We want to thank the members of the House and the Senate and all of our partners, all of our food that, that support uh, Dwarzenship, Councillor Ajiba Bona, and other people who have been uh, supporting us in the whole effort. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, right now, where we are is that um, the, the Liberian uh, House, mm -hmm. under the Ava leadership, of uh, said uh, Akaras Gray and Fadati Kofa and other people managed for the house to pass a bill. Mm -hmm. And uh, that bill uh, called for no restriction. There was no restriction um, in, in, the, in, the, in the position. The Liberian Senate, on the, on the, on the other hand, mm -hmm. we have able people in the place, uh, uh, said uh, Darius Dillon, uh, we got Vanishema, we got uh, Komine Wise, we got uh, 
uh, uh, TIJ and other people. And I uh, want to say thanks to our, uh, uh, Pro Tem, our chair for leadership in this, in this direction. Mm -hmm. The Liberian Senate voted uh, to accept the Western leadership, but they have their own condition. They had a condition on it. Okay. So uh, since their version and the, and the health version are not the same, they should meet in conference to reconcile the differences. Mm -hmm. So this is this is what we are, and uh, we want to say thankful. We are very thankful to the Liberian people for accepting the Western leadership. I came there 2013, okay. and it was very tough. But right now, on the street, everywhere, people know that we are all Liberian. No matter where you go, <laughs> where you come from, we are all Liberian. Once a Liberian, always a Liberian. Always a Liberian. Now, now Mr. Wetty and uh, Mr. Kamara, you both are uh, major proponents and, and advocates of this whole idea for dual citizenship. Let's hear from you first, Mr. Wetty. Someone listening to us deep in ground crew, where I come from, or deep in sound, where I come from, uh, or deep in, in Cape Mount, you know, and an old lady sitting there, or some young people sitting there, they may not understand or know why should we have dual citizenship? Or what sort of benefits does it bring to this country in totality? So let's hear from you first, Mr. Wetty. Well, the, the, uh, the, the, the very first thing is that we're speaking on dual citizenship for those that are born in Grand Cru, for those that are born in Lofa, those that are born in Nimba, and across the, the country. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the actual benefit is that dual citizenship, I mean, we all should face the fight. Our, our people that have the resources, everything, are outside the country. That's mm -hmm. a fight. You know, they are returning home. When they come home and they belong, they be, be part of the society, it built the middle class. What, 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 what I'm seeing that is if someone come in and build a hospital, mm -hmm. that hospital will hire Tape, it will hire Anna, it will hire Joe, it will hire Smoke. You hire Toba as well. Toba as well. And Mr. Toba can take the, 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 the income and support his, his family, mm. you know, in, in terms of food, in terms of education, in terms of everything. Dual citizenship brings a, a, a lot of benefit. You know, it, it, it replaces brain dream with brain gain. You know, people are coming with medical experiences, education, and everything. People are coming to build their homes. And the country, we are all Liberians. Mm -hmm. Once a Liberian, always a Liberian. You know, we're coming back to redevelop and participate in the country. You know, we, we're not going to be outside, we're going to be inside. Mm -hmm. And the, the key that you ask, the key reason, in addition to what we have was said, is that uh, our law says that the only a Liberian can own the land. Mm -hmm. So if you have dual citizenship, you, you don't you don't have right to a land. So uh, a sumo who was born in Lofa that went to America in natural life, but legally and constitutionally, the sumo doesn't have the right to land in Lofa. So when he gets back home, that land that he owned before he went to, like, uh, to America is no longer his land. Mm -hmm. So to encourage national development and reconstruction, it is good to give him his right. So he can be able to develop uh, uh, Vonjama, he can be able to develop uh, uh and anywhere mm. even in, in the Kerala. And so the, the, the fundamental thing of dual citizenship is it will bring back, bring it will replace the brain dream to bring in, it will, it will bring economic development and it will bring family reconnection. Okay. You know, and we all will participate. Look, this is our home. Mm. This is our motherland. It's only us that can take us to the promised land. And now we, so let me play the devil advocate now. Now uh, let me start with you, Mr. Mr. Kamara, with this whole... I agree, this is uh, you know, our home, this is our land, but a librarian, you went out there, you know, uh, you sought to, you sought, you, you, you sought to, to, to seek uh, some greener pasture you know, because you felt, you know, you couldn't get in your country, so you, you went out there, and again, you sought to naturalize yourself because you wanted to be deeply rooted in, 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 into the people, you know, into the people's uh, society, and also benefit from there. So why no should people grant you opportunity again? You know, after you've gone and taken citizenship in, in another country, you want to come back to your country and 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 and, and, and also benefits what other poor benefits who are not taking a similar citizenship in other countries like you. So so mm -hmm. first of all, uh, thank you very much, and I, I just wanted to you know say to set the history. You know a little bit uh, position is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some something called push and pull factors. Okay. All right. Uh, 
for the best of my understanding, mm. Liberians who left from here, you know, post-war Liberia, anywhere in 1991, were actually uh, basically driven out of the country, and they went to seek refuge. Mm. And some of them stayed in refugee uh, places in Africa, Ghana, for many, many years. And then, of course, eventually into the United States and some other Western country. So to, to be able to live in those countries, evidently you have to have a status. Okay. Right? And, and, and those status were, were given you to, so that you can be able to you know, support your family. And, and, and like, for example, the remittances from the diaspora alone, mm. the conservative figure is a, a little over $325 million a year. Annually. Annually. Mm. That, that is something that, it, from, from the best of my understanding, does not come from any government around the world mm. to support Liberia. And, and that figure is just, it, that figure is just uh, outside of the barrels, right, mm -hmm. that we send here. You know, when people are traveling, you know, take this to my friend, you know, our LPS, you know, the Cologne, the, you know, the teachers and everything. That, that figure doesn't even include any of that. Okay. So our, our inherent basic fundamental instinct is in Liberia. We didn't add it. Whatever we do, we are trying to support. I'll tell you a very clear example. Mm -hmm. As national president of the union, I worked in America all these years. I'm sorry to say, it's not no any boasting. I've never cleaned any feces anywhere in the United States. Mm. But I did that for the first time in Liberia on May 28th in Pinsville. I was in the water, you know, cleaning. All we're trying to do is to make our environment livable so our people can be able to have, long, long, you know, long life, mm -hmm. longevity, you know, and, and, and sustainable life. So I, I know there's an argument mm -hmm. usually that, you know what, the left front here, they, they got greener past. No, it's also a far away from that. Okay. We want to contribute to the development of this country and we'll push out the country. We didn't do it. It was not by our own volition. Mm -hmm. And we have demonstrated that over and over. I got two children here. Okay. My two children still live here. And I support them fully. I got property here, investments and other things here. And librarians want to be sure, away from home, that they come back and contribute to the overall development of their country. Okay, how do you add on what I said? Yes, um, what I uh, 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 that's a very good question, and I do, and I do appreciate that. But let's start with the Constitution of Liberia. Mm -hmm. Constitutionally, it's in our Constitution you have the right to change your citizenship. It's constitutional. Okay. So the legal aspect is there. Now, like... In it's other guaranteed under the law. It, yeah, okay. under the law. So it, it's not something that we make up. Okay. You know, um, people make decisions based on their own circumstances. Mm. You know, if you travel, your, your needs and your wants and the condition you find yourself in you make those decisions based on that, you know, to support yourself, your family. But one thing that is very clear, mm -hmm. we are Liberians. Irrespective of what citizenship they do, we still love this country. You see it on the national football team, people that play soccer. You see it in the Olympic. You see it all over the world. That Liberians who, who are diaspora Liberians, always bear the flag, you know, of the country. Mm -hmm. They always bear the flag of the country. They want to make sure that uh, the country is well represented. So we are not taking away from, from our motherland. Mm. You know, decisions that I make to support myself and my family have no uh, impact on my country in Liberia. Like you mentioned, we pretty much support our people here, you know, for the most part. And the people love us. They, they, they appreciate that though they have family in the diaspora that are helping out, you know. So constitutionally is right. Morally, people make decisions. My decision that I make to support my family, they are, they are poor, don't have citizenship. Mm -hmm. They are some poor, or they, they don't have it. Other poor make it. So all of these things based on people's own uh, decision and the circumstances they have. But in any case, mm -hmm. Liberia is our motherland. Liberia is the country that we love. Liberia is our home. And we all want to come back and support this. Now, does this, uh, 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 this advocacy, uh, is, it, is it a reflection? Uh, Mr. Kamara and Mr. Wetty, of the views of all Liberians in the U.S. Yes, it, yes, uh, uh, we 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 
want to say for the most part. Or oh, just a sprinkling number of people. No, no. Then Mr. Whitey, <laughs> then Mr. Kamara, <laughs> no, no, no. who wants to get lands in Liberia. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This, is, this is not a sprinkling number, but uh, for the most part, you know, mm. I mean, we want to be very honest. In any case, you know, you can have to 100%. But this will talk about 98 98, 99 percent of Liberians want dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you have one or two percent that may. You know, everybody have their own view. You surely. Yeah, but you know, so this is a true representation of the diaspora community outside this place. So how are they supporting it, uh, Mr. Mr. Kamara? How are uh, you no? Know, if you 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 know you 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 say that yes, indeed, uh, the if you just if you if you uh, you know that. Yes, it's it, it's it's uh, it, this whole request or advocacy reflects the view of all uh, Liberians in the U.S. How are they supporting this this it, this this movement? You know, uh, thank you very much. I mean, I went in the czar on dual citizenship, but from the most part, like for example, mm -hmm. Yola, okay, which is the umbrella organization of Liberians in more than you know eighty states in the United States, have been supportive of dual citizenship in terms of finances, in terms of moral support, in terms of lobby, since the, the foundation of the dual citizenship. And even other Liberians also of the United States, you know, in Belgium, you know, the European Union, you know, the Ghanaian uh, Liberians in Ghana, Liberians in France, you know, have been supporting it. And they do it through, you know, contributions and moral support uh, and there's a constant meeting through under his leadership, mm. you know, to just guard the process, to make sure that advocacy, the vision and the mission is very clear that all we want is for our citizenship to be restored. So, I mean, they just uh, support. And whenever there, there's a reach out, you know, to the diaspora community, people are always willing to contribute, mm. yeah, individually. and. You know, even true institutions. Now, you, the, the the advocacy is still on. Uh, like we, we we know the, the Senate and the House also to have you know, form a, a conference committee to see how best they can you know can there can be a meeting of the mind uh, so they can reach a decision and then send back to plenary for uh, either approval or denial. Yes, yes. Now, uh, Mr. Wetty, Mr. Kamara, granted, you know that you, know, you you've been making this effort and let's assume that you succeeded. Uh, there's a you know, dual citizenship, the law a, a allows for that. What do we envisage? What can't you tell your people, listening to you, uh, or people in the diaspora, I mean, in, in, in rural Liberia as well, what do we envisage? Because you, you are trying to, to, to uh, uh, you know, build the hope of your people that look, if that dual citizenship we're going to, uh, you're going to see a, a whole boom in economic activities, and people are going to get jobs, and and Liberians going to you know, uh, you know, troop in and, and 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 build some factories and all of that. But tomorrow we may not see exactly what are you what you are promising. So what do we envisage? Well, the, the first thing that we want to that we want to say is that the, the thing is a process. Mm. It's not an event. Uh, what the, the hope is that there will be a better tomorrow. Okay. We can guarantee that there will be a better tomorrow. But that process takes uh, time because librarians have to come back home, get adjusted. But one thing that is very clear is that legally, mm -hmm. they will be guaranteed the right to own land, land ownership, and to invest and retain and restore the librarian citizenship. That is fundamental to national development. Okay. You know, so when they come home free, they do it invest. In fact, even right now, most of the development that you see on Rafi Highway, you see in Kakata, you see all over, are done in Koto. Go to uh, the other place it's called in Nimba, the uh, uh, man, this city in Nimba that's very, very, I just forgot the name of my head, but the. Uh, Tapeta? Yeah, Tapeta. Tapeta, yeah. yeah the, the city of light. You know, they are Liberians that return from home, from the, from the diaspora. You know, they have been huge investment. Go to Dredru. You know, go to Vonjima. You know, diaspora Liberians are investing heavily, not only in hotels, in other things, even in hospitals. Mm. You know, in 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 in, in, in education mm -hmm. and librarians are, are, are investing heavily. Mm -hmm. So, the path of having dual citizenship will increase. We accelerate that. You know, to feel legally, hey, I'm okay because right now I don't have to pass through my aunt or my brother to buy the land for me because mm -hmm. hoping that someone will come and attack me. But I can do it directly myself. Look, 
imagine in the absence of dwarf syndrome, see how much development diaspora and are making in this country. Mm. So if we have dual citizenship where people can constitutionally and legally be guaranteed the rights and privileges to what they own, you're going to see acceleration. Now, we're not saying that you're going to wake up tomorrow and, and see sitting, uh, Singapore or New York, but what we're seeing that in the long run, there will be national development and, and we're all going to, going to benefit from that. What's our expectation, Mr. Kamara, if at all your whole dual citizen uh, campaign is successful? When successful, I think there will be, first of all, the, 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 that, that trauma, that, that mental trauma. Mm. I mean, basically, the, the PTSD is not a qualifier, but the fact that we will breathe that fresh air of relief okay. that a citizenship that was extinguished has been restored to us, we will be very, very happy, and I think uh, I can I can envisage that there will be a celebration for that maybe in Liberia or maybe in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. The other thing also is that, like you said, that uh, the fact that we can be able to even participate uh, in the political process in our country to determine that uh, you are qualified or B is qualified or C is qualified, you know, to lead this country. That alone would be again a joy, mm -hmm. because I tell you this: all of these politicians you see around here, they anchor to the diaspora for support. Surely, through their county organizations, through their party affiliation organizations. Now, if you do all of that, why do you want to dismember, you know, the very people that you go to for support? Okay. So, with, you know, you, I mean, you, you, it's, it's in my mind. I, I interpret that as some kind of hypocrisy because you you go to somebody for support, but mm -hmm. at the same time you don't want for the person to be a part and parcel of the overall political development process of our country. So we we would be very happy that when you come to us in the United States, maybe from Grand Crew, and you want your support, uh, or maybe Maryland, or maybe my own Lofa, you know, mm -hmm. country where I come from, then we know that yes, we're supporting you. We have a voice in a say of what is going to. Let me, just, let me just further stress this. He talked about, you know, uh, the booming in some of the specific, you know, cities in the country. For example, the external affairs chair president of EULA, who called him EULA foreign minister, he is, is the current president of, of, of Lofians in, in the diaspora. Okay. It, when he became president, he took over 50 plus thousand dollars to build an annex at the Lofa, you know, a, 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 a community. And, and many other organizations are doing that. They dream that through infrastructures, through other programs, and everything else. So those are the things that we envision that it will bring more strength, it will bring more resiliency, and more economic benefit to the country. Okay, so you're from Lofa County. I'm from Lofa County, yes. Well, that's a by-election pending. Right. Uh, and I'm sure you, you're quite aware of all of the candidates. <laughs> I don't want to dare into that. Because <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just asking, what are you quite aware of them? What are you know that? Uh, okay, that's good. I'm, 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 I'm a... I'm a, I'm a I mean, besides being you love president, mm -hmm. but you know, I, 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 I'm a political animal, so. So I, I you mean, are aware. I'm you aware. Follow I'm, the process. Correct. Find the process. So you have your interest there. You have your stick there. Yeah, I can say it because first of all, mm -hmm. as you are president, I cannot mm -hmm. make a decision. I thought you were supporting maybe uh, Gadaban Kotman or somebody, or no, Joseph Jalal or, it, 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 or that's Cyrus Momo. That, that's why I just said Yula has this policy <laughs> of genuine non-alignment. When it comes to any political, process. no, but you could yeah. say something as to who you support. It's just, just it's off air. Go ahead. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you listening to the SMS written on the OBC ninety nine point nine and also focuses across Liberia. Mr. J. Sherwood Sherwood Kamara is the national uh, president for the Union of Liberian. Uh, association in the Americas, and also we have Mr. Eminent Emayo S. Wetty. Mr. Wetty is the chairman of the, the, the All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship. We've been here as our guest. I'm sure shortly we'll be opening the lines. But first, let me ask Mr. Wetty. Mr. Wetty, the whole movement for dual citizenship, uh, this whole advocacy, is it is it only in Liberia that we are practicing this dual citizenship? 
for which you sought to put your weight behind it to say, no, in Liberia it has to change. If it's not being practiced in Ghana or in Sierra Leone, in, in Nigeria, it can be practiced in Liberia. Look, our uh, first thing is that in this uh, 21st century, uh, most of our country, almost all of the countries in the world, uh, are engaged in the dual citizenship. Okay. Our, our Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, next to the, uh, Africa, they all have dual citizenship. So, I mean, we are the, the very few countries I mean, by the very few, I don't have the water okay. You know, in, 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 in the Equus community, uh, I could be wrong, but Liberia is the only country now that I don't have the uh, wow. yet. So, you know, so uh, uh, it is something that every country, because everybody, uh, they, they, they have discovered mm. that the strength, the national resources, the brain, and everything is out there. So they are encouraging their people to come back home. So, in, in that process, they, they, they apply laws, regulations that we encourage the return of the best. Okay. Remember, only citizens can develop a place. Mm -hmm. Only we Liberians can develop a place. Only the Ghanaians can develop Ghana. Only Nigerians can develop. So only we Liberians can develop uh, Liberia. Sure. So uh, that is the reason. It, this is not uh, accident to Liberia. This is uh, national. I mean, if you look at Mexico, if you look at China, look at India. You know, so I mean, Kenya, if, as a matter of fact, Kenya, I mean, extended it, they have somebody from the parliament that representing the diaspora community. So, it's, it's the thing is a national, it's a global impact. But we uh, imagine that 1847, Liberia, a founding member of the United Nations, Liberia, a founding member of OEU, Liberia, a founding member of ECOR. In this morning time, we are discussing the issue of citizenship. Even in Liberia, it's so sad that a Liberian woman cannot pass her citizenship over to a child. A child that is born to a Liberian woman with a different father, that child is now a Liberian. But a child that is born to a Ghanaian is always a Ghanaian. Yes, sure. Why? So we want to change that because the only we can do it. We feel we feel honored, we feel proud that a Liberian born outside can represent us at the Olympic. Mm. And we oh yeah, oh, that's a Liberian, that's fine. But then we'll come back home, oh you're you're now a Liberian. Because of this. Now, this is our country. This is our home. This is the home of our parents. Mm. This is our promised land. We need to come back home. And coming back home, we require all the change laws. Like, like Nigerians did, the mm. Ghanaians did, everybody did. They changed their laws to accommodate the diaspora community. Mm. And that's the reason why we are all trying the best we can. You know, somebody asked a question. That look, what is the issue? That you guys come here and just enjoy. Now, if I, if you and I want to school together, mm -hmm. In this time, and you do not recognize me as a librarian. Tell me, what if both of us go to heaven? Do you think somebody can recognize my child? Not at all. Not at all. So the fight is not only about us, the fight is about a generation and poor generation and the generation yet unborn mm. that we want to pave a way for them to be able to know that this is their country and they can come here, they can live here, they can invest here, and the, and the investment can be guaranteed under the laws and everything. Mr. Kamara, what could be the effect, uh, if at all, we continue as a country, as a people, to delay or drag this whole issue of dual citizenship? I think the effect is that, um, first of all, you're scraping the citizenship, an inalienable right of a Liberian who was born here, scraping that citizenship for an individual. Okay. It just, it just uh, unimaginable. And the effect is that you basically tell that person that you can do whatever you want to do here. You can come, you can support me, but you are not a part of me. And that, you know, in relational team is not, it, 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 you know, it's not a good thing. You know, you can come here, you know, bring money to me, you know, you're my friend, you can do whatever you want to do, you can bring businesses here, but when I get ready, you know, those businesses and things, I'll make sure that you don't have it. Okay. And people are doing that. People are doing As you that. speak now. Yeah, people are doing that under the canopy that, you know, this, they, can, they can do whatever, you know, to their relatives and things like that. He doesn't like to say it, but this guy being on, on dress issue for 10 years. Hmm. He bought a land and the land was duplicated and sold to another person. So just imagine that. You know, so these kind of triggers and things like that, I think is going to be further exacerbated mm. when our rights as, as librarians are taken away. We really want to enjoy that 
our harmony, we know this is our, our hegemony, this is our country that we love and would like for our rights to be restored. Now, so before I open the lines, Mr. Wetty and Mr. Kamara, you, 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 you Mr. Wetty, you, 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 you are leading a, a very, you know, uh, 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 impressive uh, movement. Uh, I know you got a lot of support and nationally and, and, nation, and uh, internationally as well. Uh, likewise, Mr. Kamara, you, you are leading you know, a group of librarians in the U.S. But does this thing that will continue to hear every time, um, some of your people there, you know, the utterances that come out of them uh, calling for sanctions against their own country against their president and some of the some of the the posts you know, they go online and some of the things that they say to the international world it, it, it doesn't it doesn't help you know your country you know that you want to come and and, and get properties and do business as a librarian how are both of you who are influential in in the u.s how are you trying to discourage this Mr. Wetty, let's hear from you first. Look, uh, uh, first of all, we want to say that uh, we, in our, uh, we, in our own uh, parameter, I give you an example of myself. Uh, a representative from New Jersey uh, came up and condemned the Liberian government. I immediately, with our group, reacted to that. I, you know, that information about Liberia was false, not correct, and uh, we, we went after it. Liberians in the diaspora, too, are, are going to the State Department themselves are organizing themselves to counter ID for misinformation and disinformation about the country. We understand that it's not helping the country. We, we understand that. So we ourselves, are in our own way, we're meeting our senators, our representatives, and say, look, the information about Liberia is not true. Let, let me be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry. I don't, we don't like to do it. But, you know, we'll come on the dual citizenship issue. We like to focus on it because uh, the movement is a combination of everybody. So we try to avoid ourselves from the political but some of the issues, I, I, I was born in Liberia in 1962. I just turned 60. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was here during the war. Prior to the war, how many universities were having in Liberia? Prior to the war, what were the streets in Liberia? Prior to the war, how many hospitals in Benton? How many hospitals in Greenville? How many hospitals were in San Quentin? How many hospitals were in uh, uh, Bikana? Okay. You know, what, what were the rules and conditions prior to the war? So why is it now that we, we feel that this time, you know, we should be in New York? Because no, these things come. These are processes. Yeah, surely. These are processes. We, we went through war. Okay. We, we're going to come out. We're going to gradually move on okay. and on and on. But the other thing I want to say mm -hmm. is that we politicize everything in Liberia. And it happens, you know, national development and growth. But no matter what you do, there's a democratic process. People will like you. People will dislike you. It's, it's left with you to defend, protect, and make your case to the international community and to the world. But coming back to your question, we that in this movement, mm -hmm. we are doing everything we can to promote the good image, to promote the good images, to promote the message, the messages of the Liberian government and Liberian people out there. And we cannot control, we cannot stop people who have their own political view to do it. We have to play our positive role to protect and promote the good image and images, the good message and messages of our country for the benefit of the orange point and everything thing uh, uh, I, I really like uh, in Douala and everything. We are playing our part. And we hope that one day our people will realize that we are playing our part. But do you sometimes, Mr. Kamara, I will come back to you. This is very important. Do you sometimes uh, rebuke or you know, try to penalize some of your members, because whatever the you know, statements are made or utterances, sometimes some of them calling for a sanction against the government, some of them being so negative, it has a, a, a deep reflection on the image of your institution, the image of your movement. So look, these are the people who we all are advocating for to have properties, to, to end the issue of dual citizenship. But here they are in the U.S. calling for sanction. Do you rebuke your people? No, uh, actually what we do... Your members. Yeah, what we do... Look, first of all, we got to understand the democratic process, the democratic principle. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the right to express themselves. You understand? Now, the beauty of democracy is that you can, you can provide misinformation I can provide the, the correct information and let the person make their own judgment. Okay. So that's that's what we are doing. If you use the Facebook,
to send false information, we use the same Facebook to send the wire, the right information. If you contact a senator to provide misinformation, we use the same information, a medium, and use it to, to correct that information. So look, this the issue is not correct. This is the correct information. And let the person make that decision. Because the one thing that you cannot control what people say. That's, mm -hmm. that's the fundamental beauty of, our, of democracy. You should be in the position to defend, promote your view and your ideas and be able to guide the process. But you, you don't have monopoly, you don't have the pattern to stop anybody from saying anything they want to say. Mm. You don't have that. All you have to do is to promote your, your own agenda and, and use, and look, do you know one of the beauty of this whole thing? Is that the same medium, the same path that you use to attack me, I can use the same path. If you, if you, if you call a senator in, in Washington, D.C., and say anything negative about that, I can take the same phone and call the same senator and say, it's not true. I'm not going to be afraid of you. I'm not going to run away from you. You have to write and pray to you want to say, I too have that same right to promote the image and images of this country. I too have the same right. Okay. Yes, Mr. Kamara. Yes. So, um, under the Constitution, which, of course, global Constitution in many other countries, freedom of speech is a very important fundamental right. Mm -hmm. Which uh, you can but sanction. it carries with it its own responsibility. Oh, oh yeah, it definitely does. Mm -hmm. You cannot easily sanction. But uh, what I, my administration, overarching view has been that we will work collaboratively with the government of Liberia for the development of this country. Okay. We call it and team it a constructive engagement. That's why when I went to inauguration on May, I mean on May 26, I had a team collaborated a partnership to, to improve the economy and reduce poverty in Liberia. Okay. That's what we want to do. Because over the years, and, and of course we all have some background. I was a student activist before, you know, and, and I was also a trade unionist. We, I mean, after decades and many other years, you realize that there has to be a meaningful way of dialoguing about our national agenda. Confrontation, yes. Disagreement, yes. But it cannot be to the, on, on, the, on the path of tearing down you know, the country. Sure I, I've, I've also realized that when you have one regime and people favor it, when there's a regime change, then of course every other thing that happened with the other regime is totally you know, wrong. Okay. But we, on our man leadership, as national president of the union, whenever we have a position statement to make or a policy statement, we we'll always make sure that if the government does wrong, we're going to criticize the government. But if the government does, if the government does things that are positive, we we'll praise the government and we we'll discourage those who are trying to give the, the, the country a negative image. Zero eight eight zero five one four zero nine six. We have two. Our uh, librarians, permanent librarians from the U.S., they are visiting. No one is uh, Mr. Eminent Imaya S. Wetty. Mr. Wetty is the chairman uh, for the for the All Librarian Conference on Dual Citizenship. And uh, Mr. J. Shaw. Shaw. I hope I'm going to get this thing right. <laughs> That's fine. Mr. Shaw Kamara is the national president of the Union of Liberia uh, Associations in the Americas. I know we have the first call in the line. Let's take this call up quickly. Good morning. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, my name is John. I'm um, bringing a speech from this island. Mm -hmm. I want to congratulate the two gentlemen in the studio. But my concern has to do with the dual citizenship they are talking about. They say limited to only Negro descendants or across the globe. Number two. Mm -hmm. My other suggestion to them is uh, what is the value of in this country as a people that is many, many political parties. I'm speaking from my long years of experience, but I'm not educated to that extent. This political party is on our travel line, has divided us as a people. Many people look at it from the diaspora so that we can come together to build this country. Because when you come from the diaspora, you want citizenship, you come, you as a white man, as a black man, the power will be more invested in you because you got a cash. That's how we call it. 
Okay, they'll respond to that. 87 or better still, 0 0916. Good morning. Yes, good morning. This is William Hope. Uh, Give me rest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, appreciate. Uh, Hello? Yeah. Please, I say, please. I to... yeah, okay, go ahead. I want to appreciate this is William Vokuya calling from Lord my Guinea. Okay. I I want to appreciate my two brothers in studio there that are pushing the, the bill of dual citizen. Actually, we visited other countries, like Ghana, Nigeria, and other countries that had a, a dual citizenship. You know, it, it, it makes their, their, their country to be more developed. And so the issue of pushing dual citizen, you know, bill, in a house, we are all supporting it because it's our country to be like other countries. Yeah, but okay. I very, I very praying and praying along with we should not get tired. We should pray with our lawmakers so they can push the bill to pass. Jesus name. Amen. Zero seven seven six five four zero nine eight seven or better so zero eight eight zero five one four zero nine six. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm okay. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Sanokawa, uh, calling from Tokyo, Bombay County. Okay. So, uh, uh, I listened to, to our two brothers in the studio that just said, I want to young men in Bombay County who use the community radio station very for me to elevate the debate about the, the, the two associations. Because we see that at the time we're just reporting that we absorb our brothers and sisters who have left this country. And today, of course, anytime you change, you call on them. And by the, by the, by the major issue was several. Uh, people are looking at it politically because some of the messages were carried to our ordinary citizens were, oh, they, when they broke out, they put a letter for you, oh, they broke out, and so I didn't want to disagree with the Senate that they have to input conditions about because, and we're going to speak with our senators from Bombay because that one young man who is actually pushing forward for, for the drugs. So even when drugs is coming, you know, it brings, it brings competition, it brings development. Right? In, 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 for example, for two of to go to Bombay to, to go to, to, to Dwala, we see some of the huge portion of land was undeveloped. So if our brothers and sisters come into this country and know they, they have a national they are strong, we can even bring some land to Bombay County, give them a table and open land and we create jobs for our citizens. Because government, government is a great job for our people. So I just want to say things about what I would suggest to them and they try to decentralize uh, that, that, that organization in the countries because there are some young people in the country who are also supporting the dual citizenship or they just being more and they want to recommend to them that in the college of the country so that others can get involved in so, so that they will make our system understand the importance of the dual citizenship. Okay. Many thanks, many thanks, many thanks. So let's see this call on the line. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm okay, sir. Uh, this is Moses Kesley. I call you from Gardnersville. Let's hear from you, Mr. Kesley. Thank you very much. I want to thank the studio guest this morning. I'm, 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 I'm greatly disappointed. Especially when I hear Liberians who, who really don't want to develop to add, to add value to this country, talking about uh, 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 only, only dual citizenship can help them. My brothers, there are people who got citizenship in the United States. They are in the legislature. They are in their ministerial, they are in ministerial positions. All of you, you that say in studio, they got property in this country. Who has stopped you from doing what you have to do? And so we, 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 we preach what's an issue? You want to get this country into, into, into another chaos again? Why the people are just like this? You have the opportunity. You are an agreement. More than people have come from the United States with all the dual citizenship, I mean, with, 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 with American citizenship, and were denied development in this country. You have all that you can do in this country. You got land in this country, you got buses in this country, and you are running for positions and being accepted. Why you want to do a citizenship? You want to send our country? You have okay. done it several times. Okay. The one that killed this country came from the United States. Now you are offering a different thing. Why do a citizenship? Okay. Many thanks. You made your point already. Let's take this call on the line. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to this boy from Field Marina County. Let's hear from you, sir. Okay, let me say thank you. I'm going to talk about your program this morning. And let me say thank you. Okay. Uh, Hello? He's off the line. Let me take this call on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Uh, Okay. Uh, I was a leader in China before for the Liberian community. Mm. And when this uh, World Citizen issue came up, uh, I tried to find a way that uh, we can go about it. That is, uh, the, the Liberian 
ignorant and wrong to the issue a temporary resident card. That with this card, they can come to the airport, they don't need any visa. When they come, they only swap a card and enter that area. So also use this card and study how dual citizenship will work in that area. Dual citizenship is not something you wake up in the morning and then you start to do. Uh, let me just ask my question, what am I? First of all, I appreciate that time in the studio. But have they, have they took their time to study the dual citizen issue? It's not only referring to Liberia. It's also going to other nationalities. So, I mean, we need to study this thing. There's not something we want so much we just work on, we do. Okay, so, okay, man. There's a law that, that needs to be put in place so that somebody can have a criminal from other countries will not just work on and become a Liberia and other nationalities. Okay. Many thanks. Many thanks. Let's take this call on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please lower the volume. Yeah, my name is Okay. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Mm, go ahead. My first time is for the studio guest. Mm -hmm. I heard you saying that um, Liberia and Americans are being asked for help. And then you see people who deny them citizenship. So if you see hypocrisy, they are being Liberian like Americans for help. Then how does this be the West Coast we go to for help? And they are being also be now citizenship. How does this be that? That's okay. My okay. They are taking notes. They'll respond. Good morning. Good morning. Summer Josh. And yes, good morning sir. to your studio guy. Mm. This is a studio town where like, I you know. And I join you from a proper corner in Loki town. Okay. It's about the issue of uh, dual citizenship. Need to be looked at critically because we were to come on the outside. Many librarians have the fear that today is the open up to be citizenship in Liberia. A non Liberian nationality who has money will jump on your car when I will purchase all of the land are there and do whatsoever they want to do. And then Liberians who have limited resources will not be able to get what they want. But on the other side, we have our graduate on the other side. If the dual citizenship was to have been restricted, that Liberian who left our country and went on the other side, though they are loving and supporting a family member in Liberia, whenever or whenever they have nationality, if they come back to Liberia, we should also accept their nationality. I think some of us, have been okay. But to me, if we open it, some of Liberian will cry and our country will leave our hands. Thank you okay. very much. Madison, let's take this call on the line. On this line. Good morning. We're taking it to the course. Yes, let's hear from you quickly. Good morning, sir. Madison, let me take the last call up quickly. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Money, the lemon is going to be to buy. You know what happened? You all the way to 
you know, and if it will not be what you have to give you because you will not be able to have money of that level to be able to see him most of that. Okay. They definitely are going to go out of this thing. So it's something to look at very quick before coming up with that. Many thanks, many thanks. Let's go back to our studio guests uh, to respond uh, to uh, those concerns and uh, questions raised so that we can take leave of them. But let me squeeze this uh, one call on in quickly. Good morning. Good morning, Sober. Yes, sir. This is Anthony Zola. I call him Community. Okay, let's hear from you quickly. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Don. Yeah, I'm um, coming from Rolex County this morning, too. Okay, quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah, yeah, uh, I was probably on to your uh, your, your studio guest. But I just want to uh, explain briefly to the brand people the negative and positive part of the US agency and to whom it's limited to. That's my concern. Thank you. Uh, many thanks, many thanks, many thanks. Okay, let's go back to our guest. Mr. Wetty, Mr. Kamara, you can yeah. respond now. Okay, uh, I want to say thanks very much. I will start and I will ask the president. Uh, very good question they, they, they asked. Uh, let, let, let me start with it. The advocacy, the focus of our advocacy is about smoke, it's about Jackson, it's about Tane, it's about Namwe that was born in Liberia and I had the had opportunity to, to win the DZ and go to America and, and for, the, for their own reason, they make their own decision to change their citizenship. So we are talking about natural born Liberians. Our focus is not on any other person, only natural born Liberians. That's the focus of the dual citizenship. And I want to appreciate all of the callers. They, they are in line with us. They support that. Uh, we, we focus on natural born. We, we focus on the natural born Liberians. Now, on the issue of people saying, well, you know, it's an issue of duplicity. You're getting money from the white and, you, and, and they don't have citizenship. That, that, that's a good argument. But these things are gradual steps. For our advocacy, we are, we are advocating for natural born Liberians. Maybe another generation will come and advocate for non-Negro, but we are not extending our advocacy to everybody. You know, these things are processes. They, they are not events. So ladies and gentlemen, our studios, our people out there, the focus and the lawmakers, everybody agree with us. We are talking about or smoke, we talk about Collie that was born in uh, uh, Lofa that, that went to like uh, that, that, that went to America and natural even went to Australia went to Canada. So we talk about natural born Liberian. That that's the scope of our of our uh, uh, advocacy. So uh, on the issue of people of those also not Negro, that's another advocacy for another for another generation. Imagine smoke, get you and I right now. <laughs> They can't even recognize us as Liberian. Do you? T we, how how do we recognize a white man? So we, we we are not on that path. Our path is only on our natural born uh, Liberians. Okay. That's the that's the focus of our advocacy. And this thing uh, will bring national development, national awareness. We are not excluding anybody. But in any advocacy, we can't do all. We can't do all. It's a gradual process. Okay. That's the. That's the. That's the and I, I hope I, I did answer their, their concern on, uh, on on that part on the issue of political division. This is a democratic process. Okay. The two have their own differences and everything. But remember, once a Liberian, always a Liberian. That's the focus of our advocacy. We're not advocating for white. We're not advocating for anybody. We are 
advocating for those that were born here and okay. went home and when they returned. Okay. Let me Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And uh, we really appreciate you, Mr. Sobore, and most of the callers that I've been calling this morning concerning dual citizenship. I, as national president of, of, of July, just want to allay the fears of Liberians that uh, we would do nothing nothing, absolutely nothing, that will bring destruction and, and, and further you know, chaos to this country. Ours is for peacemaking. Ours is to help to develop our country. Right now, on our administration, we are even trying to make sure that EULA you know, register as an organization to work with you know, institutions in Liberia, because we do not have the framework you know, to come from America and an and imp, and impact in terms of work in our country. So we want them to, to be assured that we will not do anything. I heard one of the callers say, well, you know, uh, they brought you know, war from, you know, from America or from somewhere else. Well, the history of Liberia is replete as to how war came to this country, okay. but it's not diaspora Liberians that have been perpetuating war in this country. Sure. So, I know some I talk about some of the negatives. I mean, the, the chairman explained the positive. The, one of the negatives is that, oh, you know, why when they come here, you know, they'll steal money, they'll get on the plane and go back to America. But people here who are not diaspora Liberians, right? And they, they, uh, just this morning, I was hearing on the radio that I think they, they're trying to prosecute, you know, some people, I think, from one of the organizations. Yeah. So you have bad people and good people everywhere. So to limit that argument to say, you know what, people come from America, they come to destroy this country, you know, that argument does not suffice. Somebody also described the fact, the fact that I said, well, you know, uh, selling somebody else's property as, you know, illicit argument. It's not a illicit argument. You know, that is a crime, you know, and, and people are taking advantage of, you know, uh, uh, diaspora Liberia. So we just want to assure our people that, look, this is clear cut. We just want our, our rights to be restored. Those of us that were just members from this country, we want for our rights to be restored. And the last comment I want to make is that somebody said, you know what? You can come, you can buy land, anything. Buying a land under the canopy of not being a citizen is still just setting yourself, you know, for some, you know, future, you know, calamity. Okay. So we want to make sure that our rights are restored. Whatever we're doing is done legally and is done appropriately. Okay. Well, Mr. Shu, uh, Kamara, Mr. Kamara is the you national... Right this yes, I got it right this time. <laughs> Mr. Kamara is the national president of the Union of Liberian uh, Association uh, in the Americas. And also you heard to Mr. Uh, the voice of Mr. Um, Eminent uh, Imaiwe S. Wetty. Mr. Wetty is the chairman for the All Liberian Conference on Dual Citizenship. They both are visiting uh, uh, their own country. They've been in the U.S., they've been advocating, and they are the home trying to solidify or intensify uh, their, their campaign for dual citizenship. We really appreciate your time for taking time off a busy schedule to appear on the SMS this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to close by saying thanks to President We are uh, for his support for dual citizenship, member of the House and the Senate. And all of our friends in the diaspora and uh, at home who are support to us in state. And uh, very soon or later, we're going to hear very good news. Thank you. I mean, I mean God bless our motherland. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sober, for hosting us. And thank you for the callers and, and Liberians listening uh, in and out of the country. We, we are hoping and praying that our citizenship in this country will be restored. We love Mama Liberia. And those citizenship will be restored without any restrictions. Many thanks, uh, Mr. Shio Kamara and uh, Mr. Uh, Imaya S. Wati. Thank you for taking time of a business check once again. Thank you. Thank you.